let's talk about our last advanced rule. Now we already talked about holes. That was our first advanced rule. The last advanced rule has to do with our end behavior. Now we've already talked about that if our end behavior is bottom heavy, meaning the degree on top is smaller than the degree on bottom, we know our end behavior will always go to zero. We also talked about if the degree on top and bottom is the same, that's when we look at our leading coefficients. So the last advanced rule we have is if our degree is top heavy, the degree on top is bigger than the degree on bottom. If you are top heavy, that's going to form something called a slant asymptote. Now you may remember that they use the term asymptote I don't really like the term asymptote because you can cross this asymptote. So that's why I usually like to use end behavior instead of asymptote. But the reason they call this one slant is because if you have these two, your end behavior will go horizontally off to the side, a horizontal asymptote. If you have this one, your end behavior is going to go diagonally off in different directions. And that's what we'll talk about finding in this last advanced rule. So that is why we call that a slant asymptote. Now you may notice here you cannot have a horizontal asymptote and a slant asymptote. It's either or. If you have one of these ones, we call it a horizontal asymptote. If you have one of these, we call it a slant asymptote. But I just like to call them all end behavior. So let's talk about our slant asymptote rule. What do we do? So this rule happens with the degree on top is more than, greater than, the degree on bottom. So top heavy. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide the two pieces of the fraction. More specifically, this is long division. So I'm going to do long division for these two, and specifically, I'm going to look at the quotient. So, a reminder, when you do long division, the quotient is this thing up top. So I don't care what the remainder of my long division is. All I care about is the quotient, and that is my end behavior equation. I do y equals, and I do that quotient. So let's practice this. Let's start with 3a. First thing we should do is check the degree on top and bottom to see if we need to long divide. Remember, we only have to do long division if it's top heavy. So degree on top is 2, degree on bottom is 1. So this is top heavy, which means I need to do long division. So I have x squared minus 4x plus 2 divided by negative x plus 1. Notice I switched those around just so I could have my x first. Now, you may have forgotten long division, so let's do a little refresher on it. Start with negative x times what is x squared? So that'd be a negative x. Then we distribute in. Negative x times negative x is x squared. Negative x times positive 1 is negative 1x. Now we're going to change all the signs. Subtract, aka change all the signs. x squared minus x squared goes away. Negative 4x plus 1x is negative 3x. And then bring down the 2 and do it all over again. Negative x times what is negative 3x? Well, that's going to be a positive 3. Distribute. 3 times negative x is negative 3x. 3 times 1 is 3. Well, 3 times 1 is 3. There we go. Change all the signs. Those cancel, and I get a remainder of negative 1. Now, remember, for the purpose of end behavior, I don't care what that remainder is. All I need to do is y equals, and then I use the quotient. So my quotient is negative x plus 3, and that is my end behavior equation. That's all we got. So let's look at b. Now, b is actually kind of a tricky problem. Because, as we learned earlier in this, uh, this lesson, let's see, go back to here, we should always find the holes before we find the end behavior. So that means 
I need to take my whole, or I need to check if I have wholes first. I should always check if something cancels before I find the rest of this stuff. So if I come back down to here, and if I try to check to see if something cancels, this is difference of squares, and voila! Something cancels on top and bottom to give me x plus 2. Now, since this is what it gives me, this is actually what my slant asymptote is. Because that is what I get when I simplify it. And we're done. Let's try a harder one. C. Degree on top is 3. Degree on bottom is 2. This is top heavy, so we do need to do long division. Don't forget your placeholders. And now we do our division like normal. x squared times what is x cubed? That's an x. Notice I put it in the x column. Distribute in. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 0x is 0x squared. And negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Flip all the signs. Those go away, 0 minus 0 is 0, and 0 plus 4 is 4x, and carry down the 1. Now, interesting thing right here. If we try to do our next step and do x squared times what is 4x, there is nothing I can multiply x squared by and get 4x, which means this whole thing is actually your remainder. And remember, for the case of this problem for end behavior, I don't care what the remainder is. I only care what the quotient is. So I'm going to put y equals, and then put my quotient, and I'm done. So that is some examples of how you find a slant asymptote, and how you check to know if you need to use it. You only need to use it if your degrees are top heavy. In the next video, we'll do some a couple graphing problems where we're going to finally put everything we've learned together into the most complicated graphing problems we've done yet.